Okay, um, you've got an unusual bit now, unfortunately. Uh, you've got me for a few minutes. Um, I've just been asked to talk about, because uh, the APS group have been doing quite a bit of work trying to mitigate uh, the impacts of this virus within our own business. Um, so we thought we would uh, share some, some of the practical aspects of uh, what it is that we've done. So just to go through a few things. So, yeah, I thought we'd start by a silly photograph to make you all laugh. Um, <laughs> thank you, whoever that was. <laughs> One thing I wanted to pick out here um, is where the big green arrow is, the shoes. One of the things we all do, we all wear the suits. Um, obviously, I'm, I was waiting, the trick was, anybody going to pick a point at the fact I'm not wearing any gloves? Um, but the shoes is very important. What we've done is implement uh, uh, for all visitors to have the shoes that are captive, that stay on the site. So you take your shoes off and you put those shoes on. Um, the plastic shoe covers that we use last about five seconds. You stand over one stone and you've got a hole. So that's one of the things I wanted to get uh, across to you. Um, the other things there, I'm not going to go through again because we've heard all the other um, uh, speakers speak about those this afternoon. Um, but um, it, one of the key ones also is to start by controlling your visitors in the first place. I've had a number of meetings at places like Manchester Airport. We've had friends that have come across, colleagues from Holland I've met at the airport. Then I've gone back and got changed before I've gone back on the nursery. So we've had the meeting face to face, but we haven't had it on the nursery. Makes life very difficult to run a business. Uh, but not as, not as difficult, obviously, as having the disease. Um, so there we go. This was, in, was an involuntary photograph. Again, to try and make me smile at the end of this conversation. Um, but that's our nursery manager from Alderley Edge. I wanted to show a couple of things there. First of all, staff. So the first port was visitor control, second one is staff. To, to completely change. So that's change in and change out of staff into the glass houses. That gives you a challenge. All our sites are different. Some sites have got you know, lots and lots of glass houses with gaps in between, so it's a nightmare trying to control that area. So what we have to do there is have dirty areas and clean areas. For argument's sake, on our site on the Isle of Wight, the office area upstairs is just designated as a dirty area, so we can have conversations with, with people in that area. But if you want to go anywhere else, if you want to go, if you have access to the glass house, then you do that uh, access from the bottom, from the, from the ground floor area, and there are locks. You just see over Barry's shoulder there, code lock, that's the, that's the nursery office. So only the people who are nursery hygiene can go in that office, and that's the same right away across. Um, again, hand wash again. Uh, it was, uh, Jasper mentioned it earlier as well. Other things, mobile phones, well, probably one of the most dirty things you can possibly have. These are the most common dirty things that, that exist in, on the planet. And then the... The next dirtiest thing is the phone that you spend all your life holding. And I'm hoping you've been using that phone, by the way, all afternoon to, to put your questions through on Slido. But also food and smoking. I spoke to uh, Adrian Fox at FIRA, uh, and he explained that he used to be a smoker until he realised that when he was coughing inside his lab, he was reinfecting his uh, virus samples with tobacco virus from the tobacco, from the cigarettes. Um, while he, you know, so... Smoking, not to be underestimated. Uh, we really need to uh, control that. Not quite sure how we do it, because obviously we can't ban it, but I would quite like to. Um, so, sort about respect restricted access. Um, also, customer trays. So in order, uh, in, in, you know, for us, it's class house personnel, it's visitors, um, and it's also customer trays. And not just customer trays, but the trays that move, depending on how, how your old businesses work. Our businesses work where we, we have a tray which goes between the glass house and the pack house and then back to the glass house again. And obviously the pack house is the most dangerous place because in our, in our case, in our business, we are bringing imported fruit in. So you've got imported fruit in that space, you've got our own fruit in that space in our trays, which then go back into the glass house with, with obvious uh, crossover issues. So we've had to look at that. Um, fertiliser. People, we mentioned uh, IPM and bees today, but we haven't mentioned fertiliser. That comes from all over the place. It's handled on trucks, gets transferred, gets stored. It might be might moved from well, a you know, product that starts maybe in Israel, might move into a, uh, um, somewhere into Spain to, to be moved onto another truck. What was on that truck before the fertiliser was put on it? We need to be thinking about that thing. So one of the things that we do is strip off the outer plastic of the, plast the fertiliser deliver delivery and manually transfer the bags onto another on, uh, before it goes into the glass house. Just little steps to try and to try and mitigate. But one of the biggest things, as I mentioned, uh, trays was the biggest issue. 
one of the biggest things that we've looked at are, are uh, these links. So that's our Alderley Edge nursery, the loading bay. So we have this bit is designated as a dirty area because it has a, a vehicle on it that goes, as I said before, into pack houses. But we also, uh, we have a combination of cardboard trays, which we, we supply fruit into, and, and plastic returnable trays. This bit aims to deal with the, the cardboard trays. I don't know if you can see very well on there, but that pallet, the truck, is in the wooden pallet there. But between the black boxes is a black plastic pallet. That pallet is the one that goes in the glass house, not the one at the bottom. The photograph was taken inside the dispatch area um, on that nursery. So the, the guys involved in dispatch are dirty. They handle the tray, the, the trolley, or the, with the car. Ah, oh, thank you. That's really kind. <laughs> with, the, um, with the wooden pallet, which stays, which stays on and off the truck, um, but the plastic pallet, which stays on the nursery, is nursery captive, stays clean and goes in. So that's just way, one way of mitigating it. You're not eliminating it, but you're mitigating it. And then, if it'll just jump to the next slide, there we go. And then plastic trays. How do, how do we develop plastic trays? Well, we've made an investment to deal with the control of plastic trays that's emanated from some work that's been done initially uh, on the Isle of Wight that was done before we got involved in that, uh, on that site. And we just take it to, to another level by expanding it. This is a, a facility system. It basically is a 40-foot uh, a shipping container in the top photograph. You can see it's got a couple of chimneys sticking up on, on the outside edge there. I'm not sure you can see this spot. I, I can see it, but the vents here <coughs> run all the way down to the bottom. This, this facility was this uh, this unit was built for us by Cambridge HOK. Um, so it's a fairly simple system. Um, and then next to it, uh, the, the, the red unit there, of course, is a small uh, half a ton an hour steam boiler, which we, on this occasion we've rented because we needed to get an instant response. But for next year, we are going to invest in steam boilers on our sites to make sure that we can treat the plastic trays. So what happens is this, unit at the side, um, that's currently running on, on diesel oil, but we're gonna put gas boilers in. Again, it takes a bit more time. And this is what it looks like. So this is, we have these, we've got, uh, how have we got three at the moment. Next year we'll have a fourth one um, where we train, move over to plastic trays. And this was the test running the first one. You can see our, our managers from, from the Kent site there, Mike and Chris, with his thermal camera just testing it. Um, we opened the doors, and that's what we were greeted with. So it's low pressure steam, but it guarantees 95 degrees C. So we run 95 degrees C for 20 minutes, do a 20 minute cook. So it gets up to temperature, then it runs for 20 minutes. We had a bit of fun actually when he opened that door, they, they both rushed in and soon rushed out again because the hot water was dripping on top of their heads. We, <laughs> the measurement that Chris has made there with that uh, thermal uh, camera was, was definitely showing 95 degrees C on the trays. We picked the tray up while it was still hot to see what it was like underneath. By the time we got it outside, it was still 90 degrees, but it, it then cooled and sat in the shape that it would burn. So we made it pliable before. So we know we've got it as hot as we could possibly get it. The next step to go any hotter, you start to have molten plastic, so we can't do that. So we, but it is very, 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 very effective. We are hitting the temperatures that Anna mentioned earlier um, that you need to hit to sterilize. Um, one thing I just should just mention, we are working with steam. So obviously there's some safety systems here. I just want to focus that, you know, you can do one of these things yourself. No reason why you can't. I was talking to Peter Robinson earlier, and he's done, he's done a system for years. We've done it for, eight, for ages. So, you know, it's not, not rocket science. However, um, what Cambridge have done here is make it safe. So that little line in there, if anybody messes about, lo locks the mate in for a laugh, you pull that lever, and the system cannot operate. Um, there's units at the bottom here. These are safety valves for the steam to make sure that, again, Anybody either pulls a safety system or it overpressures at any point, it knocks it off automatically. So there's a little, little bit to just, to make, just to make sure that we, we think of the, uh, of the safety there. Okay.